My name is Ragnar Kronquist. I'm the uh, creative director and senior producer of The Secret World. And right now we're in Funcom's offices in uh, Montreal, where you can see the entire Secret World team here in Montreal behind me. Right now we are in one of our closed betas. Yeah, we have a lot of players playing the game and giving us a lot of feedback. So there is actually no death, player death in The Secret World. Um, we don't want to sort of remove that Remove you from the universe and having you die in a game set in sort of the modern day world that's supposed to feel realistic would just be kind of odd. So the idea behind death in the secret world is that you lose consciousness, you are separated from your body, your spirit is left to roam inside the shadow world. While you're in the spirit state in the secret world, you might see things that are invisible to, to, to players who are sort of conscious, you might have uh, certain missions that uh, that might have to be solved inside the spirit state, but I can't reveal anything particular right now. Now, the secret world is, of course, set in a modern day world, so we are really working hard to create links between the reality of the game and, and our reality, because in, in our heads that's shared, you know. The, the secret world is taking place, it's real, it's everything there is true, everything is true. So we are doing a couple of things to really sort of uh, emphasize that link. We are have something called investigation missions in the game, which require players to sometimes, you know, uh, go on the internet, browse around, try to find solutions to clues, try to find like the, the history of a certain character, or to look up information about a certain city, or to do some numerology, or crypto <laughs> cryptology, or, or you know, lots of different things that you can research. And we do that through an in-game browser, so you don't have to leave, uh, you don't have to leave the game in order to do that. You can open the in-game browser and, and do it all from in there. In addition, we have uh, some of the characters in the game have their own Twitter accounts, so you can actually sort of go and see the characters to meet in the game. They might have lives outside the game that you can sort of access and see and get hints and, you know, cryptic hints to whatever their fate has been, what's happening to them. Uh, and we're also looking at also other ways of linking Twitter, Facebook into the game that we haven't really revealed or talked about yet. We, um, we haven't really decided how many characters you can roll on, on one server in the secret world. There's in our game, since you don't have any levels or classes, there really isn't that much of a need for alts as you have in other games, because you can pretty much be anything you want to be. You can you know, progress inside shotgun for a while and augment that with some blade powers and then go into elementalism and then add some chaos magic and then maybe have the hammer. And you can sort of keep building your character and then create decks or builds that you can swap out really quickly in order to basically change roles. So there really isn't any big reason to have like a whole bunch of alts, except if you want to play as another secret society because that's you know your character is locked down to a single secret society but we haven't really uh, talked about yet if we even want to allow players to have more than one faction per server for example so that's something we're still discussing MMO players in general like to customize their UI and customize their user you know experience uh, in the secret world we have an entirely flash based UI which is very minimalistic very streamlined very modern uh, and of course, I mean, eventually we want to open that up as much as possible to, to players to be able to customize it how they see fit. Right now there are certain scaling things you can do, moving elements around, uh, things like that. And crafty players can even go in and, you know, sw swap out some of the flash files, that's possible. But we hope in the long run to, to offer both skins that we make ourselves and for players to be able to make their own skins, to make their own customizable UI, because I think it's really important for the longevity of the game, to, for, for players to really be engaged in changing the game experience to their liking. I mean, that's, that's a huge part of WoW is to, you know, to, to be able to change the way the UI works for your purposes. So definitely something we want to do. We haven't really talked about crafting in the secret world yet, and I'm not going to reveal too much right now, but crafting is in there. It's been disabled for the, uh, the version that journalists are playing here today in, in Montreal. Um, it's going to allow players to make really cool items that are actually worth something, worthwhile end game items. Um, but aside from that, I guess we'll just have to wait a little bit longer for us to reveal what crafting is all about. We have in the past talked about developing an Xbox 360 version of, of The Secret World. We're sort of currently focusing entirely on the PC version. Uh, we feel that's where our core market is. We really want to make this the best PC MMORPG we can. We also feel like the, the console MMORPG market is, it's Currently there's nobody really doing anything exciting there and we've chosen to not be the first ones to do it. We rather want to see what other people are doing and then we can follow up on that. I really, really want to make a 360 version or whatever comes next from on the Xbox of course um, because I think the, the, the home console market is ripe for a good MMO. But it needs to be a different game. It's going to be the same setting, 
same style to it, but it will be a game that emphasizes the strengths of the console rather than, you know, having a PC with a keyboard and mouse and sitting close to the screen. And the Secret World is coming out in April 2012 on the PC only for now.